everyone, this is Ranger Rob and welcome to the Ranger Rob Country Living Channel. I want to welcome all the new subscribers. There have been a lot of them lately. So welcome and uh, when you get a chance, in the comments below say hello. Um, we just got someone from Bend, Oregon and uh, she said hello and I want, I'm tickled when we get some locals. Um, but we love people from all around the world. And uh, today's video is going to focus a little bit on Central Oregon on one is getting ready to preserve and uh, uh, especially our tomatoes and three critters that we've had to deal with uh, with our gardening here in Central Oregon that we either discovered, been warned about or encountered you might say and uh, what we're doing about it or what's our lessons learned. So this video will cover um, some of the uh, pressure that we were put under on our gardens and our greenhouse and also the pressure of making have learning how to can tomatoes and uh, uh, so with that in mind let's move forward well guys we finally did it we got ourselves a pr uh, pressure cooker this is a uh, by whom presto yes. yeah so it's a 23 quart pressure cooker and uh, we've never, I don't think we've ever had one of these, have we? So, and uh, we've had an Instapot, but anyway, so we're kind of getting kind of serious around here with all these tomatoes and more tomatoes and more out in the greenhouse. And uh, sure, actually, we actually picked up a, another container. Um, steel pot. It's a steel pot. Stainless steel. Stainless steel. How many quarts is it? 16. 16. So I should let her do the video. <laughs> so today we wanted to kind of bring up the fact that Sherry's really good about reading directions <laughs> like some guys I know. And uh, so we're going through a kind of a tutorial. Mm -hmm. And so they have you, once you set it up, you put a, um, four, cups four, four cups of water in and you kind of go through the motions of getting it pressurized. And, and to understand how it works. So uh, that, I think that's a very smart thing. So guys, read the directions if you get a pressure cooker. So anyway guys, uh, just thought we'd show you that. Just let you know that once again, this is our first year with all this abundance that we got. Uh, we have to kind of get in the process of really canning seriously. And uh, uh, yes, that squeaky toy there. And, and the other thing I was gonna do is a follow up on our uh, dehydrated tomatoes right here if we can get them to come out dehydrated <laughs> dehydrated tomatoes right here um, so this is the first time I ever had them we put um, what was that Italian seasoning and uh, salt and pepper and uh, they're kind of interesting kind of an intense tomato taste probably because they're fresh tomatoes and uh, they're actually pretty good but it's funny when you put them in your mouth, your, your mouth's kind of expecting something different like a potato chip, but then you get this intense tomato taste. And, uh, but uh, you can kind of learn to love them. And uh, the zucchini um, came out great too. It's, uh, once again, you put them in your mouth, you're kind of expecting a potato chip taste and it's different. And uh, so uh, we like them, but I don't think I could eat a lot of them. <clears throat> um, but yeah, it's a real, kind of exciting to try something new. So all kinds of new things going on here. Dehydrating, um, something new that we've never dehydrated before. And uh, a new pressure cooker. And we did do a Costco run, you can kind of tell. Uh, one of the things we uh, learned how to make is a really good chicken salad, uh, chicken salad that we learned from uh, Sam the Cooking Guy. And so we're gonna make those later this week on Cruzon, so yeah. Anyway, it looks like a looks like grandma's kitchen in here. All this stuff, huh? Big pots everywhere. <laughs> it's like, anyway, I thought you'd get a kick out of that, guys. Just to let you know that if you haven't done this before, neither have we. So uh, we're learning as we're going, and then buying equipment as needed. Uh, we held off on this until we knew we were going to have bigger volumes of food, and we have bigger volumes of food. So. Yeah, there you go guys. All right guys, I know I got the sun behind me, 
and I used to have it in the evening. So I wanted to talk about Central Oregon pests that we've had to deal with. And so uh, I'm coming over here to the garden. And so earlier I told you about um, a very l large uh, caterpillar, very green, um, that devastated this plant. You can see how all the leaves are gone here. And uh, uh, it looks like it's gonna survive. And uh, I found a very large green caterpillar on it. Turns out it was a tomato hornworm. And I did have one more attack on another plant back here. And so uh, that told me I definitely had a problem, but I had to identify what it was and how to deal with it. And so tomato hornworms, by the way, will tend to attack the top of your uh, tomato plant uh, because the leaves are younger and softer and they tend to go for that before they go for the lower leaves. So it's kind of nice to kind of know that when you're scanning all your tomato plants, once you see something like this happening, where you're, you know somewhere in that plant there is a tomato horn, hornworm. And uh, so I didn't really do anything about it other than now I know how to monitor it. I found two of them and that's the only devastation I had to any of my tomato plants out here. So yesterday and today, I think it's because uh, the greenhouse, we uh, opened up the sides. And when you do that, that allows critters to come in to lay eggs and stuff like that. I found damage to a couple of my plants from something eating it. So it turned out to be the little green hornworms, the smaller ones that a lot of people see on their broccolis and stuff like that. So it's like crap. So that was my final uh, decision to finally buy some BT. And so this is what I got, the Montgomery BT. And it's uh, authorized for uh, um, organic uh, plants. So I was kind of happy about that. I've used this before in Arizona. Anyway, so I did treat all my tomato plants outside and all the plants on my floating raft um, to uh, uh, try to prevent. So what this stuff does, it's a biological biological insecticide. And uh, I'll put a link to this stuff, the canning uh, stuff we did earlier, and also the, this BT where I got it. And uh, uh, it's not that expensive either, really, for what it will do. You don't use very much. And, uh, hi chickens. Uh, the third thing, well, then the other thing you've heard me complain about in Central Oregon is tomato hornworms. Hornworms, the smaller version. Uh, I believe, I think they're still called a hornworm. And then the other thing was aphids. And I dealt with those earlier in the year. And, uh, we dealt with those with using a, a harmless uh, soapy water mixture, that thing you can buy that is good for organic. And the other thing I was having trouble with is we're finding, we don't know the cause of this, we've been doing the homework. And I'm at my compost bin now, I pulled these plants out. But I had a bunch of plants, this, these were live, with a lot of black, either eggs or droppings and we don't know what it's from, whether it's from flies, uh, whether it's from my ladybugs or something else. So without, um, because I have so many plants constantly rotating, it didn't bother me to pull those plants out and uh, cause I just don't know what it is, what kind of critter did it. So, uh, um, the lesson learned is to turn your plants faster is one thing. Two is, if you got a greenhouse and you're opening up your sides, you, uh, I, I can't do it right now because of the tomato plants, but I will be installing a screen 
I was thinking having the sides open would be nice to have the bees come in and stuff like that. But that's turned out to uh, bring in critters into a greenhouse that you really don't want. And uh, so uh, we're going into the greenhouse right now. I really didn't devastate. I did take a lot of plants out. I added some ones on the propagator already. I can easily replace them. The one thing that's nice about hydroponics is things grow fast. And uh, the other thing I need to uh, address is in earlier videos, if I can find the, the right name for these things, is this is not bok choy. This is a Asian um, spinach with a really funny name on it and I don't have a card in front of me to pronounce it. Um, and the reason I bought it, and I don't know why I thought it was bok choy, it looks a lot like bok, bok choy a little bit, um, is it's good in high temperature. So once I find the name of that again and learn how to pronounce it, I'll sh show you more about it. But I bought it because I wanted a spinach that was really good in high temperature. And I also got another one called a perpetual spinach right here. So that's perpetual spinach here. That's supposed to be good in high temperatures. And this Asian spinach, uh, once I get the name, I'll put the name on the screen. How's that sound? Um, uh, both are supposed to be good in higher temperatures because typically you can only grow spinach well in spring and fall. And I want spinach now. So anyway, so that's why I'm trying these. Now I, I am getting ready to plant bok choy. Um, and see how we do with bok choy. Um, from what little times I've had bok choy, I've liked it. And so uh, I'm looking forward to that. So anyway, those are some of the new things going on. I thought they'd be good for the Central Oregon people to know. Um, all of us in Central Oregon are fighting these high temperatures that came way earlier than what we ever normally got before. And so we're all dealing with these pressures that we haven't had to deal with before. One is, uh, you know, hornworms and tomato hornworms are pretty typical, but I really feel like the insects uh, are getting opportunities to have major spawnage, you might say. And so it's a constant battle. And I, in a greenhouse, I really don't want to have too many exterior issues like you do when you're outside. But when you open your sides, you're going to introduce some, some of those kind of critters. So our next greenhouse will be more airtight, more environmentally controlled. This one's a little bit hard to environmentally control. And uh, this is kind of our training center. So we're learning a lot. <laughs> so I hope that information uh, helps you. And uh, I have no idea why I laid down the... Uh, <laughs> the BT I was talking about. You know, you get talking and you just kind of drop, put something down and you go, what the heck? Anyway, senior moment. But I hope that was helpful to you guys. So there you go. All right, guys, since we covered all the things we were talking, to, we're going to talk about in this video, uh, one of the things I always want to tell you is whenever we do something new, we immediately go to YouTube and review it like the Presto canning uh, uh, canner we just got. We go through the reviews, we uh, go through the tutorials, and uh, we learn what we can. Uh, just like today, just example today, in our garden, there's always something that comes up like our corn. So our corn is getting really tall, right? And then, <laughs> um, and then it's got its tassels on the top. And it's like, well, when does the corn come? You know, when does the silking start? So we, then we... Uh, looked up the process of corn and uh, watched videos of, uh, you know, how does, uh, uh, what's the process of corn growing and when, when does certain things happen? And uh, after watching three or four videos, it's like, oh, okay, you get a pretty good idea of how the process works as, as the corn's growing and when it does what it does. And so we do the same thing with everything. We urge everybody whenever you're trying something new or you're in a certain region, you're trying to grow something or whatever, uh, there's lots of help out there. And we always hope 
that we're helpful to you guys too. And so uh, if we don't know the answer, we try to tell you where we found it. Um, and uh, uh, the other day I made the mistake, I was talking about my tomatoes, and I said the name of the, uh, uh, the channel wrong. It's Living Traditions Homestead was uh, the ones that kind of got up, gave us, gave us a heads up about our using um, Jetstar tomatoes. And it was a really good recommendation. We highly recommend them. So anyway, uh, hopefully people go around and say, hey, watch the Ranger Rob Country Living channel and hopefully that we're helpful to them. Our goal is to show people this is our first year of really getting into things. When we first started, we were building a lot of things. And now we're learning how to run our equipment, to run our greenhouse, to run our gardens, to run our hydroponics, and making mistakes along the way and having some successes, as you can see. And uh, that's what our channel is all about. We want to show you new people can get into this and you can get in as deep as you want. And there's help along the way all the time, including us. We're here for you. And so uh, if there's anything we could do to help you, we would. So guys, that's all I got for today. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. And uh, say hello in the, in the comments below. And have a great day, everyone. Bye now. This video is made possible by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags. Available in Amazon right now. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.